One of my favorite quotes from Avengers Endgame is when Tony Stark talks to his father and he says, no amount of money ever bought a second of time. This is to demonstrate that there are limits within life and physics which we simply cannot surpass. For instance, time is a fixed and finite resource that we cannot get more of, no matter how much money or technology we throw at it. He then moves on to jump back and forth in time to gather the infinity stones. Thank you for joining the Wi-Fi channel. My name is Dennis and in this video I will be talking about probably the most important and the most underrated Wi-Fi resource, airtime. Now to explain the concept of airtime properly, we need to look at the radio frequency medium. Let's take for example how voice communication works in RF. Most people don't see it anymore in their everyday life, but remember how in movies uh, people use radio to talk to one another? On one end you have one person talking and then he would shut up to allow the other person on the other end to talk. If both persons would be talking at the same time, then the conversation would be messed up. Same applies for when someone else uh, joins in on the radio channel and starts talking through the other conversation, then both conversations would end up messed up. So on any radio channel, only one person is allowed to talk at any one time in order to get all conversations to get across properly. Now the same principle applies to Wi-Fi. On any given channel, only one device can be transmitting data at any given time. This is probably the largest limitation of Wi-Fi. Now I know there are a couple of technologies to try to solve or circumvent this problem, like multi-user MIMO, BSS coloring, and OFDMA in Wi-Fi 6. But these solutions only apply to very specific cases, uh, which I will not go into detail right now. The bulk of Wi-Fi traffic is still limited by this principle. On any given channel, only one device can be transmitting data at any given time. So this brings us to the next limitation and the subject of this video, which is time itself. Devices need time to transmit their data to the receiver. And in Wi-Fi, we call this airtime. As we've seen in the beginning of this video, airtime is a fixed and finite resource of which we cannot get more. So it is crucial that each device uses the least amount of time possible to transmit their data. This is why we focus so much on speed in Wi-Fi. The primary purpose of speed isn't to give you as much data as possible over Wi-Fi, it's to get you off the Wi-Fi network as fast as possible, thus conserving airtime for other transmissions. When we talk about airtime, we talk about consumption, and we express the amount of airtime consumed in percentages. It can also be referred to in different terms, such as uh, channel utilization or duty cycle, but in the end, it all boils down to the same principle. Now, we don't have 100% airtime available to us. Uh, the medium tends to get saturated at around 80%. This is due to overhead uh, uh, and pauses in between transmissions. If you compare this to voice communication, for instance, you cannot have people talking 100% of the time. There will always be pauses and small intervals between words, lines, and conversations, which takes up a certain percentage of the time. The same goes for Wi-Fi. There will always be overhead and intervals, so we can only have 80% of airtime available to us. And we need to make the best use of that. It is not recommended to be running at 80% airtime consumption all the time. Because as I've said before, the medium starts to get saturated. This means that if several devices are already consuming all of the available airtime, and another device starts transmitting on the same channel, then Wi-Fi traffic starts getting delayed on several or maybe all of the Wi-Fi devices. This might not be noticeable at first, especially when you're downloading files or you're syncing your email. But when you're using latency sensitive applications, such as a voice call or a video meeting, you will start to experience some start stuttering or maybe even dropouts. And that's when people start calling tech support. A lot of engineers who are working with Wi-Fi might understand their product, the interface and the configuration, but they don't know about the airtime principle and the limitation it poses. 
And since it's basically an invisible capacity problem, it can be very hard to identify and troubleshoot. And that's why it's so important to know about airtime, to understand the concept and to know how to deal with it. So how do we deal with airtime capacity problems? Well, first of all, it is measurable with the right tools. Take for instance, uh, WinFi Lite, which is a free Wi-Fi analysis and troubleshooting tool for Windows developed by one man, Helge Keck. I'll put the download link uh, in the description below. If you install this tool on your laptop, it will use the onboard Wi-Fi adapter uh, for Wi-Fi analysis. If you then go to the spot where the Wi-Fi uh, problem was reported, you can analyze the Wi-Fi environment on that location. Uh, I'll give you a quick overview. Now this tool shows you a lot of information which can be overwhelming at first, but the information we're interested in right now is this column over here called channel utilization. Now, like the description says, channel utilization is a useful metric that indicates how busy a channel appears to an access point. Uh, utilization rises as more clients join an access point and as traffic volume increases. Above 75 to 80% of channel utilization or airtime consumption, retries will become very high and throughput, drop, uh, throughput drops to very low levels, perhaps becoming unusable. Here at the top, you can switch between the 2.4 GHz band and the 5 GHz band, and immediately the difference becomes very noticeable. So why is it that the 2.4 GHz band has so much more channel utilization than the 5 GHz band? Well, there are a lot of reasons for that, but these are the main ones. First of all, the 2.4 GHz band has slower data rates than the 5 GHz band. So Clients operating on the 2.4 GHz band need more time to transmit their data. Second of all, there are a lot less channels available on the 2.4 GHz band. So you have a lot more uh, access points using the same channel or overlapping channels, meaning more clients are using that channel and they all, are all uh, consuming airtime. And lastly, but not the least important, is that the 2.4 GHz band uh, has a lot of uh, issues with non-Wi-Fi interference, a lot more than 5 gigahertz bands. For instance, Bluetooth, microwaves, baby monitors, uh, video camera systems, they all use the 2.4 gigahertz band and they all consume airtime. So that is why the 2.4 gigahertz band is generally less favorable for business critical and latency sensitive applications. So if you notice that the Wi-Fi network you are troubleshooting uh, is experiencing high channel utilization, how do you solve that? Well, there are a lot of ways to approach this problem, but let's start with the easiest solutions. As stated in my previous example, uh, try using the 5 GHz band as much as possible for business critical and latency sensitive applications. You simply cannot guarantee uh, airtime availability on the 2.4 GHz band. If the access point is using a channel that is also used by other access points, try switching it to a different channel that is not so heavily used. If you're using wider channels like 40 MHz or even 80 MHz, try switching it down to 20 MHz wide channels. This way you will only be competing for uh, the airtime within a single channel instead of several channels at once, which will increase the efficiency and lower the latency for the Wi-Fi clients. Don't worry about the decrease in throughput. Uh, a 20 MHz channel will still offer enough throughput for a fast Wi-Fi experience. And finally, if you simply have too many devices connected to your access point, you're probably better off placing an extra access point on a different channel broadcasting the same SSID. That way you can load balance the clients between these two access points and lower the added time consumption on both channels. But don't be placing access points all around the place though, because too many access points is also a bad thing. You will soon run out of available channels and need to reuse channels, which will increase the airtime consumption and channel utilization. So you need to achieve a careful balance between the number of access points, the number of clients, the type of applications, the available channels and the available airtime. This can only be done through a proper Wi-Fi design using the proper tools, knowledge and experience.
So that's why it's so important to understand the concept of airtime, because no amount of money ever bought a second of time. And that's all I have to tell about airtime at this moment. I'd like to thank you for your time. Hit the like button if you learned something. If you have any questions or remarks, you can leave them in the comment section down below. Uh, you can also uh, contact me on Twitter at Wi-Fi Dennis. If you'd like to see more videos about Wi-Fi, please consider subscribing. Uh, so until next time, please stay safe and stay healthy.